and welcome everyone to the Cybercast brought to you by Cyberpunk2077online.news. I am your host, Harlequin, a.k.a. Peter. Uh, we have a very, very sought-after and requested guest. But before we get to her, let me just get to a, a little bit of house cleaning real quick. We are keeping tabs on the No Voice Motel Room, so if you have any feedback, uh, certainly uh, hit us up in there. And we will, and uh, Miss Emily has graciously agreed to take some questions at the end. So if you have a question that is not covered, uh, feel free to post the question. Our mods will pin it, and I'll select a handful and ask her uh, there. If you have a question, make sure you preface your post with question so we know what is actually a legit question and what uh, is just chit-chat. Um, speaking of chit-chat, the mods are in the room. Please keep everything PG-13 and be kind to not only our guests but each other. Um, we don't want to upset the mods. They can get very, very nasty. Um, with And lastly, we have the very talented Jason Hightower, a.k.a. Jackie from Cyberpunk, here on March 6th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you pop, uh, stick around for that uh, when that happens in the next few weeks. But with that said, our current guest, she is inc very, very talented. She's been uh, acting for 15 plus years. She went to school for dance and skilled in many styles of uh, said dance, including ballroom and traditional Chinese, which she professionally competed in. She's a musician. She's a certified yoga instructor. While living in Hong Kong, uh, she English dubbed anime at the incredible pace of about an entire season a week. She has hundreds of audiobooks and voiceover characters on her resume, including Dr. Afra in the aptly named audio drama Dr. Afra. And last but certainly not least, she plays our favorite nomad sniper, Pan Am Palmer, in Cyberpunk 2077. She is the multiple award-winning and amazingly talented Emily, Zou, Emily Wu Zeller. Let's see uh, those Pan Am emotes in chat. And thank you, Emily, for being here so long. <laughs> that was quite an introduction. Thanks. Glad yeah. to be here. Thank you so much. And... Um, to those uh, who may be wondering, yes, Harl is drinking a red blend, a perfect red. Uh, Emily is going to the gym afterwards, so she's not going to partake. So uh, I, I don't know if uh, I will be uh, pulling a drinking for both of us this time, but uh, we're, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, Emily, um, mm -hmm. let's kind of rewind and start from the beginning. Uh, where'd you grow up and what transpired either events or people that kind of you look back and you realize kind of got you on the path you're on now ah okay um well i grew up in los angeles um but i grew up in the san gabriel valley of los angeles so i did not grow up in hollywood i did not grow up in the san fernando valley i did not grow up on the west side i grew up uh, on the east side and now what is called the SGV we just, that's not what we called it growing up <laughs> we, we called it the Inland Empire basically um, that's a cool which name. is tech yeah with the Inland Empire technically refers to just outside of Los Angeles I believe um, that is like you know when you get deeper in past Pomona and you get into or I guess Pomona might count but anyway it's it's a huge area which is why it's called the an empire anyway I'm, I'm getting distracted. So grew up there, um, had parents, have parents who are deeply fans of the arts. Um, my father is a musician. He was a professional musician for a long time um, before, before he settled down with the family. Um, and my mother is a Chinese immigrant um, whose parents did not want her to get into the arts. So she did stuff on the side for for herself um, outside of school and work. And so she put herself in dance classes. And um, there's a lot of, in the area, in the San Gabriel Valley area, for those who are familiar, you may know, there's a lot of um, 
organizations, performing arts organizations that are centered around the many, many, many different cultures that um, people have brought with them as they've immigrated over. So, and particularly on the East Side, there's a lot of different Asian cultures. And when I was growing up there in the 80s and 90s, um, it was extremely mixed. I think now it might be more heavily in the Chinese direction. But at the time, um, so I, I was involved in the Chinese dance group, of which there were many. I mean, we had competitions all the time because there were so many that we could just, you know, we could host thousands of people in the in audiences and still have competitions. So um, my mom, the reason I, I'm mentioning this with your question is that she was in a dance troupe and she performed and practiced with me while she was pregnant with me so I've been performing literally ever since utero um That's awesome. she put me in dance yeah me and my sister in dance classes or both of my sisters once the third one came along um as soon as we could walk basically um and there was always music around and you know we got music lessons um as soon as we expressed interest and yeah, I mean, so I've been performing always. So that that's kind of, I, it was never told to me that I needed to do it professionally. They never expected that. I mean, what parent would wish that on their kid? God. <laughs> being, <laughs> being, a, being an artist is not an easy gig. <laughs> um, if you want to have some sense of normalcy, if you want to be able to make some kind of steady income, don't be an artist. <laughs> Um, but, but I think it's, it's crucial. It's a crucial aspect of life. Um, so they were very good about that and, and supporting that. And then it became clear that it was something that I did want to try to do professionally. So, um, yeah, I, I never gave up having a backup because I, you know, was, uh, didn't, it's there's no guarantee when you get into this kind of work um so yeah right um it's, it's interesting you say that because as we were talking before we started recording um we had uh Sherry lee here last week and mm -hmm. she said something very similar about that that her mother was a bit opposed she was pretty fairly opposed to her getting into the whole acting uh career and it's interesting yeah. that you say kind of the same thing. And I can understand that because you see all these horror stories from Hollywood, you know, um, especially during the 80s and 90s, all the teen kids and those, you know, popular shows. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. several, of, many of them did not end up as uh, fairy tale endings. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's better now? Do you think there are more safety nets in place to prevent that? Or do you think this a, a good amount of caution still needs to be presented for, you know, parents who may, who, whose children say, hey, we, I want to get in this profession? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, so there's a few things here. Um, those are two separate things. Um, what I'm talking about is, is making a living being an artist mm. as, as something that is difficult. Um, being a child actor is a whole nother thing. And like, it, yes, the the way that we consume media today is just completely different from the way that we did it, you know, back in the 80s and before. Um, so it, we've also learned a lot. And so there are technically some safety nets in place, but... The whole, it's constantly changing and so quickly and everything is so different that I, I wouldn't say it's better or worse. I'd say it's, it's okay. different. Like, you know, when I was That's a kid, fair. we didn't have social media. We didn't right. have, I didn't even have the internet until I was in middle school. And even then it was a 28-8, you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way that we, the way that we socialized and related with each other and with the world was vastly different, vastly different. It just changes not just how you present, but the 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 scale and mm -hmm. the like of yourself and how you understand time mm -hmm. and space. Like mm -hmm. it's just completely different. So I I don't I don't know that it's say it's better or worse. Um, 
but it, but it's different. So anyway, yeah, that's but that is a separate thing right. from just you know trying to make a living as an actor altogether. Obviously, there's overlap, but right. Well, getting back to that, your initial, you know, it's just difficult to pay the bills. Um, mm -hmm. I, I assume that is going to be the never ending issue of I'm going to go to L.A. and make it big. And, you know, and I, I'd be the last person to try to crush anyone's dreams. But statistically speaking, it, it's a rough go at it. I'm, 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 I'm not an actor. I haven't done that. But, you know, I, I've seen people do it. And it, it's 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 a tough gig to yeah put food on yeah, the table. It's, it's really hard. It's yeah, it's really a challenge. I mean, look, it. What would I say? I want to be careful. I want to be careful about what I say because I, I love my work and I, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything else. And there's a reason why I'm willing to put up with everything that I have put up with over the years to get here. Um, so, you know, I, I say that first. Um, but, I, but I also meant it. Like, what, what parent would wish on their kid a life of having to constantly struggle you know um and i'm not saying that i'm i'm struggling hand to mouth right now but it it's i got lucky i got lucky and i've been in this industry for a long time <laughs> it was not always this way this is you know like they say this about musicians as well and and other artists like by the time you hear about somebody mm -hmm. they've probably been around and hustling for a long time right they weren't just like hey break out new talent like no <laughs> they've been honing their stuff and like working for a really long time and this one gig that you heard of them through is not necessarily going to last them for the rest of their lives right oh absolutely football players have very very limited careers and it's it's kind of it's kind of like that if you if you catch what i'm saying like it's like or it can be like that right. if you're if you're shooting for the moon right and if you're really going for like oh i want to be famous instead of no i want to do this art and it would be really nice if i could also make a living while i'm doing that that's a very different thing from shooting the moon and trying to be a famous Hollywood star and like make twenty million dollars on a couple of films and then right. you're set for a little while. And, you know, <laughs> that's it's a it's a right. different ball game. Um, and and do yeah. you think that's what a pro the problem is? A lot of people go in with I'm going to be the next Brad Pitt. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. I mean, there's so many different kinds of entertainment too. Um. You know, we're we're talking about voiceover in video games versus voiceover in any other thing versus right. acting on camera versus acting on the stage versus dancing versus music versus, you know, sculpting versus painting. I mean, there's just so many different and even even like the digital media that I've seen lately from Pan Am fan art. Um, oh, my goodness. It's so vast. Like it's so there's so really a lot of cool stuff that's out there. I, I'm so floored i'm i don't have a fine art bone in my body i'm like i'm i'm all about performing arts but i can't even draw stick figures nicely like oh, it's bad you and i both you and i both <laughs> so i really appreciate all of the visual art that's coming out of it and and it has floored me with just how diverse the the methodologies are the forms are mm -hmm. for digital art um whether it's translating something that somebody did uh, with with pencil or you know traditional sort of more traditional drawing versus like using a uh, software or right and such to make to make images um it, yeah it's really cool anyway well um, yeah well it's funny you say that because i was actually going to ask you a question uh, similar to that but since you're already on that topic let, let me just kind of jump ahead here on my uh, little list um, mm -hmm. When did you notice the positive fan reaction and the love uh, in the fan art community for Pan Am? Um, and when you were working on her, did did you get did you subconsciously realize that this character was going to connect on the level it did, or did it take you by surprise? I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I mean, look, me and Pierce O'Toole, who was the director for the majority of it and the great folks at Side LA, um, 
we had a great time with her. And we were like, God, we love this character. She's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, we get to do, you know, more more lines and more, you know, more scenes with her. Yes. Um, but like, you know, I was doing my character. I, I wasn't, I didn't get to do the whole game, right? right. As I was going along and, um, which is how it, how it works. Uh, and then when it was released, um, I got some messages and, and influx of notes and stuff immediately. And I was like, wow, y'all have finished the game already. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a very, very pleasant surprise. Um, and when, yeah, yeah, she's, she's amazing. And I, I loved her and the director loved her and we all loved her. And so it was really nice to get that, to see that other people were also connecting with her. So, oh, a- absolutely. Yeah. And it was funny because when they first started putting out the first promos, it was all about hashtag Team Judy. You know, Judy would seem to be one of the people <laughs> they were promoting. And, 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 and uh, some of the video clips, there were little clips of Pan Am there. Uh, and I, th- mm. I think even in one of the demos, you know, they said, oh, yeah, this is uh, this character is Pan Am and you meet her for submissions. I, and I I. I, I if I recall correctly, he didn't even go into very much detail. You know, he made it sound like it was a very minor character. And I don't think mm. anyone realized it until they got the game in their hands. And they realized mm. what a significant, she's actually a very significant character. And not only yeah. that, there was this, just this immediate connection with her. And uh, and uh, so I, I just found that just, just fascinating how, and don't get me wrong, there's a ton of Team Judy people out there, and, and no, no disrespect to the Judy fans out there. Uh, you know, she, <laughs> she, she, deservedly so. Carla did a wonderful job with her. Yeah, uh, Judy's awesome. Oh my god, I love. You know, I, I, uh, I always say, um, you know, the character of Judy is my BFF, and the character of Pan, Pan Am is my waifu, and that's 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 <laughs> that's, that's just how that's just how I roll. Um, mm-hmm. and, and and you know, because both characters they bring. So, two very different aspects to the play and it's the writing uh again but pan am specifically um the writing uh it really it's very consistent writing and your performance is amazing bring her to life yeah. oh absolutely um did you have any um, input to uh, to the dialogue, like you know, like during the recording, and you're getting in the groove, and you understand the character? Uh, we did. Do you have any opportunity to say, hey, you know, I think maybe she would say it this way, or do this a little differently, or something? Did you have any no, input on that I, level? No, I did not write the script, but I don't know how much I'm allowed to comment on how that process worked. So, oh, that's I, fair. All that's I fair. Is that I was I was not a writer on the project. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but irrelevant to that effect, that what she, um, but the writing was just incredible though. Uh, I, I was, mm-hmm. I was totally. It was, it was great. And yeah. she was very consistent. And that's what, one of the things I liked about her character. She, she was a hothead. I think we can all agree. <laughs> that. Yeah. I think, I, I don't think anyone, yeah. I, I don't think that's a disputable point or fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I loved about her because she, mm-hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but my interpretation of your interpretation um, is she was like a, a, a kettle on a slow boil. It was always at, she, she seemed to more times than not be at that point where, um, you know, it wasn't at boiling, but it was just at the cusp of boiling. And yep, if you, sure. if we, if something didn't go her way, then it was Mount Vesuvius time. Is that, is that kind of <laughs> how your impression right and, and vision of how, what you yeah, to totally. Bring? Totally. Yeah. I think she, um, you know, obviously there was a lot that she's been through in her life and, um, she's fiercely, fiercely loyal and to a fault. And, right to a fault and and protective um but that also the other side of that is to be somebody who is constantly on your guard so that's how i'd actually describe her is that she's just kind of always on her guard and is prepared for people to distrust her at any moment right so um but once you're in the inner circle you're in the inner circle it's just 
she has to re you have to really prove it to her to get there right so oh, that's that, what i think about her yeah that's cool um dial um we kind of jumped right to the cyberpunk stuff and <laughs> i still wanted to talk mm -hmm. about some of your other work because you've done you've you've sure. definitely done more than I mean, we'll, we'll, guys don't worry we'll get back to the pan am that was just a little teaser for you guys don't don't <laughs> lynch me in chat yet um Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, from what I was able to drum up, your voice acting started around 2006 with Gun X Sword, English dubbing anime. Is that is yeah. that correct, or am I uh, am I wrong? Well, Gun X Sword was not the very first that I did, mm. but it was um, it was one of the first. Yeah, but yeah, it was about 2006. Yep. Um, how how did you break how did you break into the whole uh, voice dubbing? Yeah, um, well, I was living in Hong Kong, and I was gigging around, doing a bunch of different jobs, uh, acting, singing, dancing, teaching, <clears throat> and um, got connected via the network of um, other actors there, um, English-speaking actors, to this audition, and um, I auditioned and took to it like a fish to water um really there's no other way to explain it i just got it it made really? so much sense to me and i think that's because i think that's because of the dance background and the music background like having to be able to precisely match timing um and rhythm because you 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 more or less have to do that with dubbing right like you're matching their flaps their mouth flaps um that just felt so easy and it made so much more sense and i think that a lot of folks who who don't necessarily have that hammered into their background um but who are excellent actors might find dumb dubbing to be a little bit more challenging because you don't get to yeah stretch the script as much as you might um otherwise so yeah i and and that was that then that became my my full-time gig while i was out there um yeah, so that's that's how I got in there. Um, when I came back to the states, it was almost like having to start completely from scratch again. How so? So, uh, it's just a completely different market, and um, the company that I worked for didn't really give me any usable copy. So I, all of the work that I did for the year and a half or whatever I was there, and we also weren't given copies of the actual pro productions. So there's like. There are some people I get messages from occasionally, like randos, who are sleuthing. And they're like, hey, did, did were you one of the actors on this show and this time? I'm like, oh, yeah, I was. Do you have Because <laughs> I don't have a copy. Can you please get me a copy? <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm at with that. But um, yeah, so when I came to the States, I, I just I basically had my experience, but I had no proof. So I had no demo reel. I had no copy oh of anything. Goodness. I just had to start over. Yeah. But yeah. I had the experience, right? And that, right. that sort of put me on the fast track to, to getting to do other work. Because I didn't have to do as much training um, as one might if they hadn't had, you know, working full time for a year and a half doing, doing that stuff. So Now, you yeah. said... Uh, uh, a lot of your work was done in Hong Kong, and I, I want to talk about the city specifically in, uh, in a moment. Sure. Uh, but w one thing, and I want to tell these uh, the folks listening uh, and the folks in chat here, that in my intro with you, um, I was not just exaggerating or making that up when I said that when you were doing your English dubbing in Hong Kong, um, you were doing uh, about a season a week. And I yes. know that for a fact because I was listening to another interview with you uh, to prep mm -hmm. for this one, and that's literally what you said: is they were push, you were mm -hmm. working some crazy hours per week and pump and dubbing about a a, a season a week, and that that just yep. blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was boot camp <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Did, did, you, you get up, you go to work, you go back to sleep and rinse and repeat. I mean, I, I can't imagine oh, how, no, you no, no. A, how you do a, 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 a Let season me... in, in a week. No, I'm going to pause you right there. Like I said, 
performing arts, if you want to make a living doing this, it is not easy, right? So like um, several years ago when some of my friends started having children, um, some of them, they're not all, not all of my friends are artists, right? Some of mm -hmm. them are in tech, some of them are in business, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> they were like, oh man, you know, I'm just like tired all the time. And like, I get up and then it costs so much money and like, I don't go out anymore. And like, I, you know, everything is about the kid, but it's so worth it. And I was like, oh, you know what it's like to be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and I, you know, I say that a little bit facetiously, of obviously. Course, of course raising children is different from have a profession right uh, uh that is that is not if you're not in the profession of raising children which some people are but um but i mean to say is that there are so many overlaps and that's something that a lot of people who aren't artists can understand so that's what i mean is that it's a point of departure or a point of reference so it's something that literally takes up all of your time you're more often going to pay to play than be paid to play and you, the only thing that's driving it is your own personal investment. Nobody else cares whether or not you're doing this thing. It's about what you want to be doing, right? And you have to grow this baby from its infancy when it doesn't even know like its head from its tail mm -hmm. into something that can walk on its own and think for itself and be and and be present in the world without you constantly having to take care of it, right? I mean, you do because you're always going to be its parent. But you don't have to uh, wake up in the middle of the night all the time. Or in my case, this is what got me on it. Yes, I worked from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the dubbing house six days a week. When I was done, I went to rehearsal for shows at night or performed at night. So no, I did not go home and whatever. I grabbed a quick meal that was as cheap as I could find. I went to rehearsal. I did the show, went home, slept for four to, hour, four to six hours, got up the whole thing again six days a week on the seventh day you better believe that i was doing some other work there was there is no such thing as weekends there is no such thing as off time and granted that is on the more extreme side right mm -hmm. but it, um i i do think now what i would say to people coming up is like make sure you take time for yourself and you're not running yourself dry like that because you burn out and i i did experience that so you have to balance it, but, but it's everything. Your whole life is, has to be performing. Otherwise you just, if you're willing to let it take 30 years to have something happen, great. That's what it's going to be. If you want it to be your profession and for it to really be your thing, you better be ready and willing to take more than full time to dedicate to uh, honing your craft and getting out there and figuring out the ins and outs of everything. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. That's I, hundred ten percent agree with you as well. Um, yeah. and, and I think I think you can apply that generally to pretty much any profession, really. If you want to succeed in whatever you, whatever passion or goal you have, you, mm -hmm. sometimes you know more times than not, you got to put in one hundred fifty hundred fifty percent, yeah. not just one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's like it's an it's being an entrepreneur, right? It's like mm -hmm. it is your thing that you are growing. It is it, you can't help but think about it all the time and mm -hmm. and whatever. Um, but again, I say that knowing that we're Americans talking in America, and Americans have a problem with overworking. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, there is a benefit sometimes, but like it comes at a cost, and that cost isn't necessarily always worth it. So make sure that you are taking time to really take care of yourself, um, you know, and that doesn't just mean paying too much money to go to a spa once every few months. Like, that means sleeping enough, eating well, drinking enough water, like that kind of stuff. Right. Taking time for mental health and spending time with people you care about and doing things that are not the thing that you're spending all your time thinking about because you need to balance. So, yeah, that's what I'd... That's my advice for those kids out there. <laughs> <laughs> Grizzled old lady that I am. <laughs> nice. Now I, I, I do, but I do want to uh, swing back to Hong Kong. Uh, I ha now, yeah. I've never been to Hong Kong, so I'm going to defer to you. But from the pictures I've seen and for what people who have visited have told me, they're like that is the most literal cyberpunk city 
um, in the world. Is that is that is that true? Is that is that, is that a true statement? I mean, look, I haven't I haven't visited all the cities in the world, so I don't feel like I'm actually an authority to say that. Um, yes, there is a lot about it that can feel very cyberpunky, um, but I think that's also true of a lot of the mega cities in Asia. Um, Sing really? well, my Singapore, not so much, I guess. Um, I haven't been to Tokyo, but I've been to Osaka, mm -hmm. and I mean, you know, big, big world cities in Asia in particular, I think, um, because of the density and the rate that technology um, takes off there. Like, there there's right. just they seem to be ahead of us, really, um, constantly. And yeah, so it, it, I can see how Asian cities in general would feel more cyberpunky. I don't know that Hong Kong is it, but yeah. Because I've seen it's certainly. Some... Uh... No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I, I was just going to repeat myself. <laughs> uh, no, because I've seen some pictures and some of, I mean, just, you know, the typical neon lit, huge skyscrapers, uh, narrow streets. Uh, just some of the pictures mm -hmm. I've seen of Hong Kong is just, I'm like, wow, that's like, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, so look, I, I lived in New York for a long time and it, New York is, is certainly a big mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt it is the biggest city in the United States. But when I got there after having been in Hong Kong, I was like, oh, I have so much space. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. You know, it's like, <laughs> why is the subway so slow? This doesn't make sense. You know, it's just like, <laughs> if you you want a real mega city, definitely check out a place like Hong Kong. Like that'll that'll give you some real metropolitan yes. experience. And I've seen some like what in the game would be called mega buildings, and there were like literally some very similar buildings in Hong Kong, and people like living in. <laughs> generously calling them apartments about the oh, square yeah. footage um not much bigger than my bathroom and yeah. it's just and, and they're just it, it is just floor after floor of these micro again i i feel calling them apartments is very even studios is very generous uh, <laughs> living units i think is more apropos Posted stamps. yeah yeah and 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 <laughs> Is that still a? Th I mean, I don't know how old some of these oh, pictures oh, are, but is that oh, still yeah. a thing going on there? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my yeah. god! Where you god. don't you don't necessarily have a kitchen, you might have a hot plate. Yeah, um, a a place to plug in. Your, we have what's called the shoilet, which is the shower head that is directly above the toilet. So you close the toilet lid when you're going to take a shower. And that's uh, <laughs> your 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 bathroom is you know yeah what uh, three by three, shawl, a stall, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah yeah that's a that's a real thing that's a real thing. Americans, I think we we it's very easy for a lot of Americans to take for granted the amount of space that we have. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Uh, that's wow. Yeah, that that's yeah. when I saw those pictures, I was like, "Oh my god!" If, if that was if that was here in the states with us, the the health department would be just like condemned, you know, <laughs> just like no, no two ways about it, just condemned. Well, no, not necessarily. Actually, I I would say that a lot of those spaces are quite clean and quite well maintained. Um, oh really? So I don't I don't actually think it's unhealth unhealthy in that regard. No, 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 not at all. I mean because. When you have the constraints of such tight quarters like that, um, and I, I don't know, it, it comes down to culture too. But there is a real, especially in Hong Kong, and I'm only going to speak for Hong Kong Yan, okay? But <laughs> they're course. very clean, and they're very, um, I guess we are very clean. I'm more Guangdong Yan than Hong, than Hong Kong Yan. For anybody who speaks Cantonese, what up? <laughs> um, <laughs> So they, they really take care of their space because you don't have a margin of error, <laughs> right? It's just, you you got to, you don't have right. another option. And if you don't want to live in a dump, you're going to take care. And so that's, I actually found that to be true, even of like walking on the sidewalk. Yeah, of course, you're going to get your random dodo who kind of flo floats around. Right. But for the most part, like given the amount of space and the number of people who were there, it was an incredibly clean, incredibly well-organized place. 
Um, yeah, so I think that just comes down to to a, a full culture, not just on the individual, but like you know, supported by the by the state and the right. the general overall culture of and, um, cleanliness. And in the chat room, Orange Juice said, "Shoylet, my new my new word. I love it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very affectionate. <laughs> Um, so now let's just, uh, now you have won multiple awards doing audiobook work. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did you get into that? So, um, when I got to the States, um, you know, I was hunting around for ways to get into, to voiceover and, um, I was living in Rhode Island and, Oh, my um, neck of the woods. Ah, I, I thought I might've detected in. The uh, accent. See, here we go. I knew that was coming. I knew, especially with a voice actor, I just knew uh -huh. that was coming. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Yes, I, I grew up in, just long story short, grew up in Connecticut. Now I live in Boston. So there you have it. Okay. I'm New England okay. through and through. Yep. Yep. Um, so I lived in Providence and um, I was I was gigging and, and you know, doing the hustle, um, of course. working a full a full time day job, but then also full time performing mm -hmm. wherever I could. And um, I. I was connected to the people at um, Brown University and um, the actors, the acting students there <clears throat> and um, was. Uh, it was shared with me that that there was an audition that BBC Audiobooks America was holding for audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yes. So I, <laughs> this is a fun story. I visited my family in Los Angeles. And because my dad at that point no longer was per performing professionally, but he had his own little like tiny I'll put in quotations, music studio, right? So he had equipment, um, but he hadn't like outfitted the studio that was, so it wasn't acoustically good for recording necessarily, but it was his space where he played music. So I got into that space with whatever mic he had, which I guarantee you was not. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it was not a Neumann. It was not a Neumann. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. I need to like, create a demo how can i create a demo okay here's a mic i need a pop filter okay i like cut a piece of my mom's pantyhose held it held it with one hand and then with the other hand anchored it down on a paper book that i held in my in my left so my right hand is holding the top of the pantyhose my left hand is holding the paper and i read three minutes on this whatever recording equipment my dad had sent that in on a CD mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, they called me in to, to, to do an in-person audition. And then it was, the rest is kind of history. So that, that was my start. And that was in, they, I sent the demo in, in 2008, they called me in 2009 and I started recording books in that, that February and it was not full time. But that's when I started recording books, was February 2009. They had recently relocated from New York to Rhode Island. Um, they no longer exist. But um, at the time, they, they were looking for local talent, which is why they were looking at the MFA students at Brown. Um, oh, okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. So I really got lucky, and I'm really grateful to the people who connected me to these auditions. Because without finding out about the auditions, I, I never would have had a chance so um yeah just really it very uh appropriate question that just appeared in chat by ren uh which really segues really nicely into what we were just talking about uh ren asked have you done voice work in cantonese uh case i got all the whole seal because it's if you're going to do voice work in cantonese um in Hong Kong, which is mostly where the demand is, uh, they want you to be able to read. And like most uh, Chinese American kids, not all, some of us were really good and went to Chinese school for a really long time and are able and are, can read. <laughs> I am more or less a, a, a illiterate. Um, 
I can read like 300 characters or something, but it's not functional, you know, so I can speak it, but I can't necessarily read it. So uh, unless it were translated into um, Pingyum, I, I couldn't do it. Um, but I have done a few gigs in the U.S. where they needed somebody who could speak Cantonese and so did a few lines here or there. Um, in the movie Mordecai, I, I did some ADR for that one. In a, there's a scene in Hong Kong and there's a couple of, of girls who speak Cantonese. That's one of them's me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> occasionally. Uh um once so, every 10 years <laughs> you know? so what languages do you know um so cantonese is the fam is the language my family speaks okay. but i also grew up around a lot of mandarin my chinese dance teacher was a taiwanese mandarin speaker um and that was my foreign language in school so i haven't had a chance to really practice it at like the fluent level mm -hmm. so I, I i use it a lot in books and stuff um but not not in terms of like carrying on more than a few lines of dialogue ever at any one time um so yeah it's it's mostly cantonese a little bit of mandarin a like you know an la drops worth of, an east la drops worthy of spanish and uh that's it <laughs> Oh, speaking of that, um, I believe it was Drago Trent said uh, he's from uh, what was what was uh, the acronym you used for the part of LA you were from? S SGV. Yeah, he said he's from there too. Oh, hey, what up? <laughs> <laughs> See that Drago Trent? Uh, we 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 got Emily just gave you a shout out. So <laughs> so let's get back to the um, now chat. Uh, this is your time where you can now spam some uh, Pan Am emotes because we are getting back into the cyberpunk questions. We know, we know, we know you love the. Yeah, there we go. Yep, yeah, they they love their Pan Am emotes. <laughs> they love their Pan Am emotes. Um, so, and you know the irony is, I don't know if if, if you're not looking if you're not looking at chat or not uh, to not be distracted. I, I'm pulling it up now. Okay, I'm pulling it up now. you see the one where she's <laughs> smiling with the blue background. Yeah. Pan Am yeah. doesn't smile. I am saying that is photoshopped. <laughs> that is fucking photoshopped. Yeah, people have done a lot of a lot of uh tweaking to yeah. to her in the fan art. Oh my god. There, there's um yes, uh there there is we'll we'll, we'll get to that. But yes, the 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 amount of art hashtag team Pan Am is just just blows my <laughs> mind. Blows my mind. Um, uh, where was, uh, now, now <laughs> I've told it, now I, oh my God, oh my God, what is happening, I don't understand what's happening right now. <laughs> um, so how were you first approached about Pan Am and what was your initial reaction, uh, with, with the pitch? Um, well, I have an agent and, um, it came through my agent like any other audition mm -hmm. and job. Um, and I was not told, I, 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 again, I, you know, I, with, with the auditions and, and such, it's all um, extremely confidential. Of so course, of I course. didn't, I didn't necessarily know that I was going to be working on this um, when I was doing the audition. I just knew that it was a game. <laughs> <laughs> and so I auditioned like I do with every other game, you know, being as, doing as much as I could with what information I had and then that was it so so yeah. you were given you really weren't giving a whole lot of no yeah no so it's it all, was more a voice test really right? it's not, it's not, yeah it sounds like it was more of a voice test than anything else is that is that an accurate assessment um I don't know I I, I really can't say I I I think each project is is different. They don't necessarily. Some some projects know the, who they want to work on. Some don't. Some have hundreds of auditions. Some have a handful. Uh, you, you know, it, it really varies. And I I don't know on on their side what it what it looked like. I just know for me, I got an audition through my agent, and I submitted, and then they called me back and then I did another round and then it was it. They were like, okay, we want you for this character. And I was like, cool. I don't know who this character is, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> and, so yeah. uh, when you, um, when you actually, when you got the job and you actually started, uh, how much, 
at that point, obviously, they were able to give you some information, some background. How much mm-hmm. did you have and how much did you just have to internalize and, you know, uh, figure out in your own head? I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're asking. Can you be more specific? Oh, sorry. Like, like when, uh, when you got hired as Pan Am and you knew about mm-hmm. this character, how much did, mm-hmm. how much information were they, background information were they able to give you about this character? Uh, was it a fair amount or was there just, well, we, we, this is kind of where we think the character is going and you just kind of had to, you know, uh, j- just internalize and kind of figure things out in your own head about her? Um, I, I don't think I can really answer that question. What I can say is that the director, Pierce, was amazing mm-hmm. in, in instrumental in bringing everything together. And obviously it was enough. I had enough information to, to make her real and to give her real emotion behind what was, what was happening in any given scene. So... Uh, that's how I'll, that's what I'll say about that. That's fair. Um, was there any um, when you were working on here? Was there any anything any specific inspiration uh, that you drew uh, for, for your performance for her? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. It was all about. I mean, this is acting, right? Like. Sure, with some characters, you might take a, the frame of some he, real live human or some other mm-hmm. character and then strip them and then create and then redress them with your own whatever. But like, no, it was, you know, this is a woman who is in a, it's, she's she's a hothead and she's in a band of <laughs> people out in who live out in the desert who rejected the night city living and this is the scene that you're in and this is this is who she's interacting with and and that's it then i looked at the text and i was like oh, okay i got you and nice that nice. was that's what we did yeah. um you, so you got, uh, oh go ahead go ahead yeah i mean it's you you build characters that's that's what you do as an actor and you don't you're not alone right you have the text you have the writers, uh, the the greater storyline. You have the environment, so yeah, it, we we built her together. Nice, and you built her. You did. <laughs> <laughs> um, when uh, you, you know, it's very funny. And again, I don't know if you were this, if uh, you were aware of this nuance uh, about her character. Well. But wait a minute, hang on. Mm-hmm. Hang, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm seeing Drago made a note about it's great they allow the characters the actors to build the characters. I did not do any writing. I did not write any bit of it. So I just want to make sure that that's not some misinformation that gets out there. Um, it's just that's what actors do when they hire. <laughs> <laughs> Drago, what are you when doing? Hire... Dude? What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure you know because I just I don't. I, I really care about the game and I really care about um, my work and I just want to make sure that it's all very, very clear. Um, yeah, that's that's when you hire an actor to do a job, you're not hiring a voice. You're hiring a person who's going to bring life to a character. Yeah, does that make sense, that distinction? Oh, absolutely. You're not hiring a sound, you're hiring a human. Oh, I like that. That's Yeah. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Thanks, Drago. <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry so so what were you asking no 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 it's fine no, really absolutely. interrupted no it's, it's all good um what was i asking uh where where uh, uh no i lost my train of thought um <laughs> uh where oh uh did you feel uh someone wanted me i i submitted questions from other people and they submitted some questions mm-hmm. to ask you one of them wanted to know, um, did you feel any connection, personal connection with the character? Did anything in her click with you personally? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I mean, I love her. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's my girl. Like, yes, yes. I, I, Hashtag I Pan Am Palmer. Hashtag Pan Am Palmer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, well, but that's also... Again, I'm going to go back to the acting thing that if you don't have an element of truth, that you can smell that a mile away. 
So to do a good job as an actor, you have to find ways to connect with what somebody is saying. Um, when they're, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like there has to be, there has to be truth behind it. With Pan Am, it was easy because there's so much about her that felt um, analogous to my own personality. So I was like, oh, girl, I, oh, I feel you. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, with, uh, with that said, you know, it was very interesting. Again, I don't know uh, how much you played, actually played the game, but when you actually first meet Pan Am, uh, you know how there's also tarot cards all around the city? Um, uh-huh. It, the tarot card and the, the developers basically said wherever the tarot cards are that relates to either the person or the location where that tarot card is and it's funny mm-hmm. that the tarot card right next to pan am when you first meet her is a strength card astrologically mm. speaking the strength card is associated with the leo and i am convinced that pan am is a leo astrologically speaking because she has all the <laughs> traits astrologically speaking of a leo she is she's a natural leader she is uh she she can have a temper uh and a short fuse uh she is very passionate and she is very protective of those she loves and she hits all those boxes (laughs) that is uh i really i like that take I like that take. <laughs> so I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I've, I have said it, and I no unabashedly, no apologies, and I am a hundred. I will take that. I will die on that hill. Pan Am is a Leo. <laughs> Pan Am is a Leo, no doubt in my mind. I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> I, I can only say it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, so yeah, so let's kind of now get back to the reaction. Um, when did you first notice? You said you said that you shortly after the game release. That's when you started seeing all this feedback, this positive feedback about Pan Am. Mm-hmm. About how how shortly after the game release did you start seeing this 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 tidal wave of which ultimately well whatever turned into a tidal wave of just basically pure love for the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it started like a day after, basically. Oh, really? It was immediate. Wow. It was immediate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Orange Juice says, but is Emily a Leo? Hmm, the plot <laughs> thickens. Uh, uh no. That is not I was not born in what is it, August? I'm a I'm a pig in the Chinese zodiac. What what date, August? I'm not in August. Oh, you're not in August. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not. I am not. I am not a Leo. Oh, okay. No. I am. So that's why I, I might be a little biased. I might be a little biased. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. In full disclosure, I am an August Leo. So, mm-hmm. um, could you describe the creative differences, uh, if any, between voicing a character? Uh, like Pan Am and narration for an audio book, do you have a preference? Oh, they're so different. They're so, so different. Um, no, I don't have a preference. I love them both. I really do. Um, they're just different. Um, you know, with video games, you get to really dive into uh, one character or maybe a handful of characters, and like you have it, all of the writing is. Um, are lines that are written for that character. With books, you have a lot of um, exposition and, you know, the narration part of it. And then occasionally you get a scene where you get characters who are talking to each other. But the majority of the stuff is you building the world with your voice instead of just infusing one character with as heightened especially in video games right because the environment is so much more immersive um and distracting because you have a lot of other noises going on and a lot of other characters that are played by other people and um different paths that you can take and whatever with an audiobook is one person usually i mean sure with the multicast whatever but even then it's usually like a person for a particular chapter so it's you sitting with one person who's giving you all of the characters and all of the world and all of the, so the the na- and it's also very much more intimate. It's quiet, 
right? It's you and that person and a story. It's not, <laughs> which like, they're both, they're both fun. They both have their place. Right, um, right. So I, I can't say that I, I love more one more than the other, but um, I do appreciate being able to do both of them. For me, it feels very balanced that I get mm-hmm. to do both. So, yeah. Um, when you were recording your lines, did either of the, either the actors who played uh, Valerie or Vincent, did, did you have any of their lines to play off of at that point? Or were were you were you just reading off the script and you just had to put it in your mind what, you know, their, what they were saying? Mm, honestly, I don't even remember. I don't remember. That's fair. Sorry, I can't answer that one. No, that's, it's all good. Um, and my last question before we take a few uh, questions from the peanut gallery. That's a really old reference, huh? Showing my age. um uh, in the ending where uh the player chooses johnny to take over the body um you may recall pan am's voicemail to him at the end she's basically Mm. like listen you took v from me i'm gonna hunt you down like a dog basically Mm -hmm. that's her voicemail Mm -hmm. um I've been in a few debates with people, and once again, uh, this is a hill I'm I, I I feel strongly about. But you know, I I'd love to take your take. I my impression of the vibe I got from that character uh, is that was not hollow threats. Um, she is going to track down Johnny, um, aka V, at that point. Um, and she, you know, he's going to wake up in whatever flea bag hotel he's crashed in, walk out his door to the parking lot, and there's going to be Pan Am with, you know, a dozen, uh, nomads and vehicles and saying, uh, yeah, you're going to come with us now and, uh, I'm going to find a way to bring V back. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I, um, I really, do you, do you feel that's, you know, that that is true. You don't feel that, that those were hollow threats on her part. You really think there's a day of reckoning <laughs> um, coming for Johnny? Um, here's what I will say. So I can't speak for anything that's outside of the game because I, there's I literally don't know what exists outside of the game, right? Yeah, um, that's fair. But in the game, um, generally when Pan Am says something, she means it. Yeah. Uh, right. That's that's generally true, and I think. Even if, regardless of whether or not she ends up following through on the threat, she definitely meant it when she said it. So that's I fair. know that's kind of a... No, 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 that's fair. <laughs> but I mean, but you, I you know it's... the character better than anyone, so that's why I wanted to get your take on that voicemail, yeah. uh, on that particular ending. Um, yeah. 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 No, she, she means everything that she says. Um, whether or not life will allow her to follow through on things or not, that's, that's a whole other thing. That's, but... that's, that's fair. Yeah, but, but she, does, she doesn't seem the person of hollow threats. I, I just don't no. get that vibe from her at all. I mean, if, yeah. if Pan Am left me a voicemail like that, <clears throat> I'd be looking over my shoulder constantly. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just being honest. I, 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 it's like, this girl is going to kill me. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that, that's, that's just the vibe I get from the character. And, um, right. you know, I, I got you here. You are, the, you are the source of the character, so you, you know the character better than anyone, so I figured I'd uh, ask you that. So, with that said, let me uh, pull up some of the uh, questions my mod. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys, there's no way we can go through all these questions. Yeah, so, I don't have too much more time. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no worries. Let me just... Um, uh, I can maybe take, like, two questions. No problem. Not no problem. Um, uh, let's see. Uh Oh, geez, guys, there's so many. Uh, uh, we kind of answered some of these already. Oh, here we go. What about the world of cyberpunk interests you the most? That's a good question. Huh. Hmm, me personally? Yes, you personally. Hmm. Um. I mean... <clears throat> So, <clears throat> how would I say this? Um, I think like a lot of us in 2020 and 2021 are um, concerned <laughs> about the world 
And I think that in general, cyberpunk, not just this game or even the original game that it was based off of, right? But um, I think that it serves as a warning. I think it serves as a tool, like any story, honestly, to talk about what could happen um, and what what about human nature remains the same or what shifts according to our environments. And so those big questions, I think, are what interest me about cyberpunk in general. And then that, that's also true for the game. Um, it's those big questions about humanity and what, what, it, what do we really need to feel human and how do we adapt to spaces and all of that. Yeah? That's fair. Um... And the last question, what was your favorite Pan Am scene or exchange in the game that you did? <laughs> that's, that's almost like asking you who's your favorite child, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so like I was talking about the difference between, you know, getting to do big characters in voiceovers mm -hmm. versus, or in uh, video games versus doing uh, much more intimate reads in, in mm -hmm. audiobooks. Um, I would say the same for Pan Am. Like it was so much fun to go on a ride with her and like destroy some shit. Um, <laughs> but also, also like when she's having a beer with V, mm -hmm. man, that's what's up. You know, like it's kind of both. <laughs> so yeah, I I guess those those two kinds of moments. And, um, and we started this conversation talking about um, red wine, and we ended this conversation talking about beer. So <laughs> I, I, I feel I feel those are two good bookends for this conversation. Indeed, indeed. Indeed. Well, Emily, thank you so, so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, if there is some more work as Pan Am down the road, I would love to have you back. Thank you. And um, just so everybody knows, I am doing a Reddit AMA on Wednesday, February 24th um, at, uh, I believe the time is 3 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be on there with um, a, a colleague of mine, Gabra Zachman, and we're going to be answering questions just about voiceover in general. So if people have more questions, um, I were happy to 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 talk then and is there any so. other uh projects or sites or anything you want to promote or put out there into the pipes of the internet um yeah sure i mean the 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 project that gabra and i are working on specifically is something that's called love bites originals and we are producing short story romance and erotica um so it's uh We've we've released our first season, and it's called Nice and Naughty. If you were to search anywhere that you might get your audiobooks, um, Nice and Naughty, and then you might have to put in Gabra, which is G-A-B-R-A. -A. Her name is Gabra Zachman, our audiobook goddess on Instagram. Um, you will find this short series, which is five episodes. It's a total, total runtime of four and a half hours, so it's not really a, a huge commitment. But they're really they're really sweet stories. They take place in Queens. If you're if you're into romance or erotica, um, and there's also some like random recipes in there, which are really suggestive. I I think it's hilarious. We're really proud of it. Um, so if you want to check out some stuff, just uh, yeah, you might want to you might want to wear your headphones when you're listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's, it can get it's adults only. It, it's please. It is eighteen plus. Nice. Um, yeah i like so. it i like it <laughs> awesome well everyone check out her uh reddit ama uh check check everything out and emily once again thank you so much for your time great uh, you are the most wonderful person to talk to and i've had a wonderful time thank you so much thank you and bye everybody thanks for your messages <laughs> <laughs>